Hey, what's up everybody? So we are going to look at doing EQ and mixing drums for a particular song in Pro Tools. Uh, so for today we are looking at a track, uh, it's called Let Me Guess. It's drums only. Notice we have a kick, we have a snare, we have a hi-hat, we have some high toms and low toms that are already edited out, and we have an overhead left and an overhead right. Okay, so some pretty good drums there. So when we do this mix, we're actually going to be doing the mix in uh, the view of the mix window, which is going to look a little bit more like an audio console from here. Okay. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to take all of these tracks and we're going to bring them down. Okay, We do not want to have all the tracks at zero when we start mixing, except for the master fader. The master fader we are not going to touch at all. Okay, We usually never touch that. We sometimes add in um, some effects and plugins, but we never really touch the fader because we want that to be at zero. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to try to figure out where in the overheads uh, the perspective is coming from. So are we in drummer's perspective or are we in audience perspective? So in drummer's perspective we would see the hi-hat on the left hand side because that's how you would be playing the drums. If you were in audience perspective we would see the hi-hat on the right hand side because again that's how the drummer would play the drums. So where we see that hi-hat in this uh, stereo field is going to determine where we're going to put the hi-hat and all the other toms and drums uh, in the regular mix. So first thing we can do is, is overhead left, overhead right. Again, that doesn't really matter. We don't know if it's drummer's perspective or audience perspective. So I'm just going to kind of follow what they say. I'm going to solo these tracks, and then I'm going to bring these up to about zero again. And in order to sort of snap that there, we can just click on that get him to zero and that's pretty that's fine so if we hit play we're noticing that the ride is on the right hand side there it is so let's get to a part that has only hi hat that hi-hat is going to be on the left-hand side. You can already hear that it's on your left speaker. There it is. Okay, so that's going to give us a good picture of what the entire drum set sounds like. Now, we can take it out of solo. We're going to keep the overhead left and the overhead right exactly where they are. We're noticing that our master fader, everything is looking good so far, so that's good. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to bring that kick up until it just supports go so it's supporting the overheads now it's not overpowering it if we put it too high then we would just be hearing kick drum we would not be hearing the kick drum from the overheads again what we want to do is we want to just support the overheads with this spot mic there we go okay we're going to do the same thing with the snare drum only we're going to mute the kick drum this time because we just want to hear it the snare drum inside of the overheads. same thing with the hi-hats but now with the hi-hats we're actually going to bring them up a tiny bit a little bit higher than we normally would and we're going to pan this right and left in order for it to find the spot where it's going to land in the overhead so for example if the hi-hat in the overheads is right about here on the left hand side well we don't know where exactly that particular hi-hat is going to land so we can't just kind of put it here because we don't know 
So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to find that exact spot by going back and forth until we can hear in our headphones or in our speakers that the hi-hat is now matching up with the overhead. So for example, here's the hi-hat. On the right-hand side. But we hear in the overheads it's on the left-hand side, so I'm going to sweep that to the left. Until it about matches, and when it goes too far, now I'm hearing two hi-hats. And that's kind of doubling the volume, so that's what we want right there, okay? And same thing, now I'm going to bring it down and all the way back up until it supports. Notice you don't need much hi hat. Awesome. Okay, so same thing with the tom. We're going to just try to find a spot now where the toms are playing often. So I'm just going to highlight this particular clip so we can hear exactly where they're coming from. And I'm just going to loop my playback by going to Options, Loop Playback, so that we're just constantly listening to that. Okay, same thing. Tom was actually put more towards the right and with the low tom, or I should say adjusted towards the low tom. Yeah, okay, great. Now let's find that low tom, which I'm expecting to be pretty far to the right hand side. Here's your low tom. Now that's supporting pretty well. And if you're noticing, my gain staging is actually looking really, really, really good right now. Nothing is really clipping, uh, except when I was going a little too far forward. So now I'm going to unmute everything, and we're going to see how this whole entire mix sounds together. Okay, so there we go. That's pretty much your basic mix of your drums, right? We always mix towards the overheads with live drums versus bringing up the spot mic and then trying to match the overheads to those. So this gives you a better and true picture of the sound of the particular overhead or particular uh, acoustic drums, right? Now this is going to be completely different depending on what drum set you actually use. So that's why I'm showing you this method of just going through bringing up the track slowly and then trying to find it in the stereo spectrum because you'll hear it match right up, right? You'll either get a doubling of the volume or you'll sort of hear it pop through the mix a little bit more, right? And if you notice, none of my tracks are going really past zero except for maybe that snare and it might have been recorded a little bit softer, but everything else is below zero and we're still getting a really strong mix on the master, right? So that's exactly what we want. This is called proper gain staging. Now, for your EQ portion, this is going to throw the mix off. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to plugins, 
I'm going to go to EQ and I'm going to use the 7 band EQ for right now just because it's going to give us more options for what we're going to want to do with this. Okay, so 7 band EQ means that we have two filters. We have a high pass filter and a low pass filter that we can work with. And then we have five bands of equalization. Now for this particular uh, plugin, we can turn these bands off, which just saves a little bit of processing power. No, it's not really necessary, but I like to kind of turn it off. And then we have a few different options on the low frequency and the high frequency EQs. Okay, This one right here, if we put this in, is going to be more of like a shelving EQ, where it's going to uh, affect all the frequencies below it and above it that way versus a parametric EQ which is this circle right here which gives you a lot more finer control okay and this is the one we're going to be using the most in parametric EQs okay so first thing we're going to do is we're going to do a search and rescue method on this particular kick drum and what I want to do is I want to hear what is actually in this kick drum and I'm going to use these five frequencies determine if I want to keep those or let them go. So here's my kick drum. I'm just going to jack this frequency all the way up. Okay, so there's something there, but now I need to shorten my cue so I can find exactly where that is. You hear how it's starting to distort there and it's becoming really present? So that means that there's something interesting right at that particular point at 57 hertz. Okay, so I'm just going to turn that off and know that 57 hertz is going to be something that I want to check out a little bit later. I'm going to go a little bit further now. So there's my 57 hertz. Okay, right around here there's something interesting too. So I'm just going to turn that off, find something else. Okay, so there's something like really boxy right there about that sound. Not sure if I want to keep that, but I'm just going to uh, keep that frequency locked in so I know if I want to do anything with it. So move on. Okay, so there's something interesting here around 1.5 hertz or 1,500 hertz. And let's see if we can't find that beater happening at the top. So that beater is the actual kick pedal uh, beater hitting into the drum head. And we can hear that it's becoming a little bit snappy, and a lot of drums have that little snappy part. That's kind of looking like cute. It's usually around 4K. Go. Let's see. Start this. There it is. Awesome. There it is. Okay, so I have five different spots where I need to decide if I want to keep those frequencies or remove them. Okay, so I really like the beater. I'm going to keep that, but now I'm not going to gain it as much, right? We're only going to work in 3 dB increments of gain. And that's really all we need. Even though it looks tiny over here, remember 3 dB is a doubling or a halving of the signal. So if we increase by 3 dB, we're actually doubling the amount of volume. If we decrease by 3 dB, we're actually reducing the volume in half. If we reduce by 6 dB, that's a half of a half. Okay, so that's how that works. So I'm just going to use 3 dB or so around that beater. I really don't like that sound, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove it, okay? I don't think it's really necessary. I don't like that boxy sound either, so I'm just going to remove it as well. And we can already hear that the kick drum is becoming a little bit more present, right? I don't mind that. It's giving a little bit of a higher thump, so I'm just going to increase that by, say, 1.5 dB, so it's not as much. There's my thud, right? So I like that thud. I'm not going to increase it by much. There 
it is. So without the CQ, with the CQ. It gives it a much tighter type of kick drum sound. Now, as I'm noticing, I'm just keeping a little bit up here, uh, excuse me, down here and up here, and I'm kind of removing most of the middle. So I, I kind of don't like any of this stuff right over here. I can actually take this EQ and just open it up more. Maybe just get rid of this one and just remove most of the middle of this kick drum. I just don't need it. May not be as aggressive. There we go, that's a much tighter kick drum sound. So without this. Now adding it back into the mix, we should hear it pop through a little bit more, and I'm going to give it just a little bit more beater. Oh yeah, there it is, much tighter. Okay, so let's take a look at that snare now. So we're going to go back to the EQ7, solo that snare. So let's try to find some interesting parts of that snare. Off. That cue a little bit. Okay, so there's a lot of thump right there. I'm just going to take that down a little bit so we know where the thump is. Let's find another interesting part of that snare. bit of a ring in this snare. So same thing, we're going to boost it until we find exactly where that ring is. Let's find a better part of this snare. So there's a little bit of the smack. like we found the ring, so basically I'll just get rid of it now. So that gets rid of the ring. So we are missing a little bit of the smack of the sound, but that's okay. If we want to add a little bit back in, we can just kind of add it around that area. Alright, let's find some more stuff going on in here. So let's turn that off. So now we're looking at the snappy part of the sound. like right around there and then we want to try to find something else interesting maybe try to get this uh, snares looks like we're pretty close okay so right around this area yeah, I'd say right around this area right here I'm open up the cue a little bit so bring a little snap to it Okay, so now we can actually include all of these interesting finds in here, and we notice that we have a, uh, a pretty good EQ curve for this particular snare. So, this one and this one are pretty much doing the same exact thing, so I might actually just get rid of that uh, mid-range frequency, and I might just open up the Q a little bit more just to save, um, save a little bit of processing on that. I'm only going to increase that by like say 4 dB. That gets that low end to that snare. It gives it a little bit more bottom. So far my gain station is doing pretty good over here. Let's see what's going on with this frequency. Now let's see if we can't get a little bit more snap. I'm going to open it up so that it just affects a little more frequencies. Good. And then that snap giving it a little bit more life too. I'm going to actually increase that to like 5 or 6. Makes that high end of the snare just come out. So here's the snare with no EQ. 
with EQ. Great. Now we're going to listen to it the whole mix. Sounding good. All right. Let's move on to Hi Tom. Okay, so working on this high tom, this is sort of the EQ curve that I came up with. Um, so I'm just going to remove all of these and kind of show you how that EQ curve came about. So if we're listening to that high tom, I'll put one of these in there for right now. Actually, it's better. It's over. All right, so if we were to boost this up, we would notice that there's something really interesting happening at that frequency right there. There's that low punch to it, right? So I'm going to kind of keep that there. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to look for that other sort of low punch, which kind of gives it that classic tom sound right there. And that's the frequency that I found. So I'm just going to remove it, or excuse me, bring it down a little bit to about 3 dB. Now in here, it's just a lot of boxy emptiness that we kind of don't need from a tom, right? So we're just going to bring it down just like we did with the kick drum, right? We kind of don't need any of that stuff in here. And up here is the actual click hit of the stick. So if we keep that, we keep that, we remove this, we remove this, we get a nice, a nice tight high tom now. Nothing with EQ, and it's going to fit in a lot better. And I might even now need to bring up that high tom. There we go. Awesome. Okay, so we're going to do the same exact thing on the low tom. So if I solo that low tom, okay, let's find a spot where we actually have the low tom. find some of that interesting stuff. Ooh, there it is. Wow, found it right away. Okay, so that's the low part of the tom. Let's find something else. Cool. Yep, so there's something else. Let's find this other middle stuff. boxiness that we kind of just don't need, so I'm just going to remove that again. It's fine. It's... Go. So that's kind of more of the stick hit, right? Let's kind of bring that right about here. Let's add that. Let's add that. Now, these are kind of close together, so what I might actually do is I might just kind of cut and split the difference and then open up the cue so it's just a little bit more natural. might not be enough clickiness just because of the way that the drum might have hit the drum with the mallet or the stick. So that, uh, that actually sounds pretty good. So without any EQ, it's kind of a dead tom. Kind of gives a little bit more life adding it together. Just kind of listen to that. So now we're going to take a look at the overheads. The overheads are going to be treated just a little bit differently, right? With those overheads, we don't need any real low end stuff because we're getting that taken care of with the kick and the high and low tom. So 
what I would actually do for the overheads is I would actually put in a little bit of a filter. It's going to not sound great separately, but with the whole entire drum kit, it's going to sound really, really good. So what I would actually do is I would actually get rid of a lot of the low frequencies. And I might even put this at, say, like 300 hertz, just because I don't want to really get too much of the low frequencies within this drum. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to simply use that shelving EQ now and just try to get some more of the interesting stuff out of the cymbal. Because really that's what the overhead is looking at. It's looking at the cymbals, right? So I kind of like where this EQ is right now. It's a little bit lo-fi, so to speak, but once we add it to the rest of the drums, it's going to sound really good. So all I'm going to do is I'm now going to just drag this whole entire plugin over by holding the uh, holding the option key and it's just going to copy it. So if I click on one, I click on the other, there's my EQ curve for the left and the right overheads. Okay. Now it's going to give a much snappier overhead. So if I add this all together, I'm noticing my kick is just a little bit loud now. And now we have a really, really clear drum sound. Okay, without EQ, I'm just going to turn this off. Okay, it's a little uncontrolled right now, but now once we start adding these in, the cymbals are really going to punch through, and each drum is now going to sound very, very, very good. And if you notice, my master fader wasn't clipping it at all, right? So the only track that's actually going a little above zero is the snare, and that's okay because it was recorded a little bit low. But now my gain staging is actually really, really, really good, right? I'm not clipping in the master fader, and the rest of my drums are all well within limits, and we can, if we need to, we can boost them a lot later. But as for right now, this is a pretty solid drum mix, okay? So just to reiterate what we did, one is we got a uh, really basic drum mix by pulling down all of the faders except for the master fader, keeping it at zero. Two, we raised them until they supported the overheads, okay? Three, on the spot mics, what we did was we boosted them up until we found where they sat within the panning and the stereo spectrum of those overheads. So then we brought them down and brought them back up in order to support them. Four, we did the search and rescue method on the EQs for each individual drum. And there we go. Okay, For the hi-hat, we really didn't need too much EQ on that. Um, that hi-hat sounded pretty good. But if I was to go through, I would treat that hi-hat uh, very similar to what I might do with the overheads, right? So uh, depending on what you want your hi-hats to sound like, if you want that kind of trashy sound, trash can-ish type sound, I might do something like... Uh, uh, that's more of a ride, so let's find, a, let's find a good spot for this. Okay, so depending on what you want your hi-hats to sound like, Okay, so that's kind of a trash can sound. Be hitting some trash cans. Or if you want to sound a little bit more brittle, kind of boost around here. Okay, and that's pretty much all you need. The hi hats are really going to come through the overheads, um, so I might do something like like that for the uh, hi hats. I'm not going to spend too much time on them. And I'll just bring them down in the mix. So that's your pretty standard mix on your drums, okay? So after this, I would go through and add some compression. Uh, I would probably group these and then finally put them back into the full mix, okay? So that's how you do your basic drums, uh, basic live drums with a good overhead picture and spot mics.